All right, it's uh, beginning of June. I just had this unit in town. Got two new front slippers put on. The old tires were horrible. They had huge cracks in them, and I mean huge. Even the guy, the tire guys, like how this thing get to town. And uh, anyways, it's got front and backs. The calcium was full on the, the old ones they took out, so we've adjusted calcium because we were spinning uh, with the backs. So these were right full, and now they're 50-60%. And then the back ones, they're brand new. The guy I bought this off, he put brand new tires on it just before he sold it. There's the thing. It's got the little rubbers on it. The little rubbers were here when I bought it last summer or whatever it was. So these are brand new tires, those are brand new tires. There's 40% uh, calcium in them now. So hopefully we got all the issues solved with this uh, unit. We got the new Baylor, the Heston 956. Uh, I didn't use it last year because the hay was so crappy. We got like a third, a quarter of what we normally get. So we just ended up using the old baler. I never even put this on the tractor. So anyways, we'll have to uh, get the tractor backed over here and hook it up, wire in the monitor, and uh, get this unit moving. Oh, hey, this is a horrible, horrible design New Holland came up with. That aluminum hub is seized onto this shaft. You would have to cut it either with a grinder or a torch or something. But the problem is, is when you cut aluminum, it almost explodes. Uh, it gets trapped in the grinding wheel disc and then it gets heated up as you're cutting away at it and it gets embedded in the abrasive and it'll actually start like almost like a little firecracker. It, stop, it starts popping and cracking. And then I don't know if you torch it, if they just melt or what. But anyways, we never took that off. I ended up cutting the guard here, pulling this forward. We couldn't get this bearing and sprocket off. We couldn't get this bearing and sprocket off. So we ended up undoing a bunch of stuff. I ended up cutting the chain run here so we could pull this just enough. Dad was able to get the bevel gear off in the back here. The new belt's on. This pulley, of course, you've seen in the other video, it was all loose. So there's a brand new belt on. It's a B140. It's 40 bucks or something, but man, there's six to eight hours with two guys. So 12, 16 man hours uh, with the both of us. Uh, to change that belt that's just that's horrible like that's something you got to change a couple times in the life of this machine and man i cannot believe how difficult that was so here's the old round baler it's a case international 8460 it's a heston 560 in darker paint with case uh, decals so it's sitting on the white ready to go i have ran it i think it is actually ready to go Blair's just got a new tire uh back when we were doing some spring tillage work and now last night when we went to do the chores there's no cl there's no clutch you got about three and a half four inches of free play right there i have adjusted it down here before i kind of thought the last time i adjusted it there wasn't going to be much adjustment i'm going to try and adjust it and if not we're going to have to do open heart surgery and these split right there there's the bell housing I got a new clutch disc because I knew the clutch was going and uh, I got the heavy duty because I only want to do this once. I don't want to, I don't really care for splitting the tractors all the time. Like the Massey, we had practice on the Massey. We've done it a few times. And then this gem is in here. It's a Heston 1150, again, darker paint, 8350 Case International. It's back when they were together in the mid nineties, late nineties, whatever it was. So, just working on this. Took it to the machine shop, had them put a stub shaft in there. This broke last uh, summer. It broke more or less flush. This is all one casting, I believe. And then they machined the shaft and that shaft. So it's all cast with a, with a counterweight and a flywheel type thing. There's a couple bearings here. It was out of course. Took it into the town, got them to put a new stub shaft on. Hopefully this works. This is discontinued, unfortunately, at least for the 1150s or the 8350s. 
uh, I think the 1140s and the 1160s, you can still get it, but they're a little bit different. Instead of the V-belts being back here, there's just a single V-belt on the one. And then the other one, I think the V-belts come down here and the, the crank, they call this a crank. It's physically shorter by quite a bit. So anyways, this got rid of the wobble box. This was their last kick at the cap kind of before they all went to disc binds. And you get rid of the wobble box. New Holland had a really crappy thing with their wobble box. You had to tear half the machine apart. It was like a nine hour job if the wobble box went. John Deere's weren't too bad, but anyways, uh, that stub shaft is driving that bearing. And then this wobbles, which sickles the knife back and forth. So anyways, once we're done this, I want to pull the whole knife out of here. I got two brand new spares up in the tunnel. We'll just physically change the whole thing. This needs all new sections and bolts and everything. It's probably been used for three years now, so it's a little bit on the war outside. So yeah, I've been fairly busy. Need to get some of these projects put back together, wrapped up, and then it looks like we're gonna be starting a new project with the Bolero Slayer. So, bit of an update.